King's Cross. I spent quite a bit of time up here working, wandering around back laneways, not thinking about history much, but just bouncing around, being very naughty. For me, it was an unassuming street for a long time, and I thought the other streets held more dark histories. And in the last few years of reading, this street sort of came alive with different types of stories, gangster stories and normal stories, and, and a family connection that I'd only recently discovered too. Not since the day we left, I haven't been back. Keller Street, King's Cross. For most young Sydney so it's a place of late night cafes and nightclubs with a few quaint old businesses in between. But for me it's a place where history happened. Right here is the Mansions Hotel. That was originally Keller's house. That gave birth to the street. Keller Street springs from Kellett House, one of the rambling old colonial mansions that dominated the cross of the 1850s. By the late 19th century, financial depression had hit Australia, sending the rural poor back into the cities looking for work. By the 1920s, it was not uncommon for several families to share one terrace or for one family to own several. Meanwhile, Australia's 20th century gangsters had arrived. Imagine, two vicious gangs ruled by two even more ruthless women, Kate Lee and Tilly Devine. Their gangs came to a head here in 1929, so I've asked uh, Larry Ryder, Ryder of Razor, Tell us a bit more about it. What do, what do you think they called them Razor Gangs for? Well, they called them Razor Gangs because um, they brought in a law in the early 1920s that outlawed guns. And so they had to hit each other with something. Um, so instead of carrying rifles, which would earn them an automatic 12 years in jail or a very heavy um, prison sentence, they started carrying these cutthroat razors, which people used to use to um, shave in those days. So that if they're walking down the street and they're stopped by a policeman, and they're found with the razor on them, they can pull it out and say, I'm going home to have a shave. Yeah, yeah. So they were legal, but they were also lethal. Can you um, describe uh, Killer Street of the 1920s a little for us? Yeah, well, it was very different to today. It's in the old days, there were a lot of doss houses, brothels, sly grog shops, hideouts where thieves hid from the cops. It was a pretty tough place, and it was a natural home for a lot of the gangsters in those days. And you have the two gangs of Tilly Devine and Kate Lee meeting here in this very spot in the early hours of a, um, of a cold August day, insulting each other as the cocaine and booze took hold later in the day. It um, escalated into open warfare. And then you had this, um, this riot where 50 or 60 gangsters are just slashing and shooting and belting each other to bits. And the riot only stopped because the combatants were too sick and sorry to continue. Police came and arrested everybody. No one, no one else dobbed on anybody else, which was the, the, um, the criminal code of those days. But uh, St Vincent's Hospital did a roaring trade that night. Incidentally, my great auntie Ruth lived at number three during that very time. We managed to meet Mark, who lives at number three now, and he was kind enough to let us bring Ruthie back for the first time in 78 odd years. Looks smaller. I've got one memory of the, of the inside of the house. As you went through the front door, there was uh, doors on the left here, and then you walked down the hall and then up the stairs. And we used to go out there and cook our food. On the top of the stairs? Yeah, there? just the top of the stairs. There was no kitchen. Wow. This is the, the scene of um, the big Razor Gang riot that went on for a few hours that yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. You could hear them screaming yeah. and going on. Yeah. And uh, I used to get in the bed and pull the clothes over my head. I was frightened. I could hear the adults talking about it, the Razor Gangs, and somebody just, such and such got cut up last night or something or other like that. And there was plenty of talk going on, you know, because it's so noisy at night time, you know. That you hear screams going on. Mum used to say, don't take any notice of them, you know, just somebody crying or something like that. But, um, of course, as I got older, I began to realise what it was. Yeah. You know. But uh, I never ever saw any of them, but I saw plenty of crook looking people walking up and down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably quite harmless. <laughs> I love the street. It's, 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 for me, it's a great place to live. It's, you know, like I really love the, the trees and the, the atmosphere. Well, once you turn around the corner, anyway. Amongst the older people, there's definitely a sense of community, but 
there's a lot of young professionals that just kind of are head down and yep. out. But those that kind of live in the area and habitate the area, I suppose, are, yeah, there's definitely still a sense of community, I think. So, not much has changed, and a lot has changed. Almost every big city in the world has streets like these. Though in this one, the quiet leafiness of the street belies its darkness. The broken music of tragic forgotten lives, both past and present, still echo around this crooked bend. In Choker's Lane, the doors appear like black and shining coffin lids, whose fill of flesh long buried here, familiar visiting forbids. And sometimes thieves go smoothly past, or pad by moonlight home again. Even the thieves come home at last, even the thieves of Choker's Lane. When sunlight comes, the tradesmen nod. The pavement rings with careless feet. And Choker's Lane, how very odd, is just an ordinary street.